Hello everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics. I have the famous Tom Sinclair from Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Thank you for being here, Tom. Paul, thanks for having me on. It's a treasure to be here. I'm so happy that we have you here. Um, so many people say they watch your show, especially in the house of worship market. You get a lot of churches coming to us, and I say, hey, do you know Tom Sinclair? They know you, they watch your show, you've got a lot of fans. How did it all start, Tom? Explain it to me. It started in 2009 when I duct taped a tripod and a webcam together to broadcast a soccer match. And we found a little a company out in the Midwest somewhere that would give us a web page with a video player this big on it. And we broadcast a whole day worth of soccer and it blew up. And I realized at that point that there is an incredible market here when people have an interest and they can't physically be present for whatever it is, this was live now, that live video was going to be just huge, just huge. I thought at first it was just going to be the soccer world. And so we broadcast two or 300 soccer matches over a couple of years, going off and doing remote matches, doing home team matches. And it never dawned on me until later that any passion will do. I've got a client in New York that loves to teach people how to make shoes from scratch. Yeah, that's not on my radar either. And if we took a survey here of the folks at NAB, I bet you there would be very few people that would be interested. But you put it on the internet and go out to folks all over the world and you can get a huge audience. So anybody that has a passion for something, live video broadcasting, is a way to take that passion to a greater audience. That's how, in a nutshell, that's how I got started. Wow, and uh, one of the things I've seen you do in some of your shows is bring on remote participants. And it's something that's kind of new, like almost having your own talk show using vMix, using live streaming. It's something to me is very interesting because we've hosted webinars for years now. Uh, to get people to come in and see live streams of the video and sh show the cameras off. But what we found was is that, you know, video co conferencing and webinars, they require a client to be downloaded, you know, a Skype client or GoToMeeting or Google Hangout or, Web or WebEx. And then what we found is if we start doing our shows live streaming, many more people will join and watch the live stream because they don't have to download anything. They go to YouTube. They understand it. They don't even want to be part of the video conference. They just want to be a third-party viewer of the stream. And ever since we've changed over, it's been great. And now I started learning from you and some other people that you can actually have the video conferencing going, have your own talk show, and live stream it as well. Yes. <laughs> so, and well, I was watching you. I know you've been working on like a talk show type system that allow people to do that. Can you kind of explain like the foundations of what, because people have been coming to me and they've been saying, look, live streaming is great, but we always, we've seen that, you know, you can also bring in remote participants from all around the world. And I feel like that's what really starts to bring not just one guy at a live stream, but now we're bringing in an expert from India or somebody across the country all to a shared conversation, but also sharing it with so many people online. I feel like that's like going to really help, you know, push it all forward. And Paul, it's opened up a, a huge world and a huge market for this. Um, two products in particular that, that have really come to play. And one is a, a vMix plug-in that is the audio controlled switcher, which if you've got three or four people on a call, each with their own mics, this software listens for the voice and then will switch to the camera for that person based on that. So you, it almost controls itself. That's, that's an element to it. So if you had a s audio control switcher, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, it's, 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 it's the audio control switcher. And it's only available through us. Uh, it's on our website at easternshorebroadcasting.com. And that is part of our talk show package. The other part, which is still in development, is our talk studio. And the talk studio is actually a piece of hardware that will have in it the ability to connect four video calls. Now, notice I said video calls, not Skype calls, because we want to have more control over the audio and the video and the connection than Skype will allow you to have. So we're working with a WebRTC designer to put together a package that will produce the ability to have four callers in, 
The callers can come in, they'll talk with an operator, the operator can put them into a green room where they can talk amongst each other or where they can watch the show until they're cued to go into the show themselves. Now, it's going to be a little bit of overkill for most folks, so we'll scale it so you can have a one-user version or a four-user version, uh, but it'll be a piece of hardware, rack-mounted hardware, and it won't take up a whole lot of space, but the idea is that it's something that you don't have to deal with. It'll be very easy to work and bring a Skype caller in. And one of the problems that folks have when they, and I say Skype caller, see I've fallen into that route too. But one of the problems that folks have a lot of times when they set up a remote video feed like that, they have problems getting the video back to the return video back to the guest so that the guest can see what's going on. And of course, with video, you have to have audio. And we've, we've solved those problems. We've worked that out so that that comes. I mean, and I've talked with folks. I've been guests on shows where they've basically taken a webcam and they've pointed it at a monitor, you know, and they're shooting that webcam video back to me so that I can see what's going on. And I understand sometimes that's the best solution you can come up with. But with the new introduction of Nutex NDI, that has changed the game. And with vMix's integration of NDI, which is just superlative, there I've got, I like to work with old equipment because I'm a cheapskate. And with some of this old equipment, the NDI software won't run, but vMix will run and the implementation of NDI in that software will work. So if you're thinking about NDI and you want connectivity from PC to PC, consider that vMix might be a solution. And there's a free vMix. The vMix basic SD version is free if you want standard definition. The basic HD version is I think 60 bucks. And as a piece of utility software, now you, you wouldn't want to use it as your full blown production software, but as a utility software, it's going to be a great way to make that that conversion. We'll be doing some shows on this on uh, Streaming Idiots, which is the, the live show that we do on Wednesdays, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, and the afternoons, of course. And um, hopefully folks will pop in and take a look. And we post those on YouTube, and that's on our website. Links to that, too. Thanks for asking that question. Good yeah, question. Well, it's interesting because uh, let's flip this, this whole thing on its head and look at it another way. And I just had a client look into it, and I know there's people out there. So think about it this way. Okay, let's say in this world they're doing video conferences, right? Uh, I was just talking to a university that used Adobe Connect. It's a platform that teachers can use to bring all of, if their students can't make it to class, they can watch, they can log in and watch the class. But what they wanted is they want four cameras and they want lower thirds and they want everything that vMix does. And so I, and, and the thing is they want all these cameras over here and then the teachers in all the other side of the room. So what you, and they said, well, and they want all of that in their video conferencing software. They want it in Adobe Connect. I'm like, well, that wouldn't have been available two weeks ago, but now that new tech uh, NDI is available, now that vMix is available, you can have a laptop with four com cameras, let's say, even pan tilt zoom control, which we'll talk about in a moment here, um, with, with vMix over here. And then you can have the teacher's laptop also with vMix taking the output over the local area network, and then they can use the external feature of vMix. And now they can do all their switching in their switching booth over here. The teacher's webcam is now the output of vMix. So it's kind of like the opposite, right? Instead of taking the video conference into your live stream, now we're taking all of that stuff into the video conference. So there's just so many applications for this stuff. It's amazing. It is really amazing. And it, the, the NDI, I was telling somebody this morning, NDI is, is a lot like Legos. And in fact, vMix is a lot like Legos because there are lots of different ways to put it together and make it do lots of different things. And what we're going to find is that people are going to say, ah, well, you know, if you can do this, then you can do this. That means you can do all these other things. And all of a sudden, boom, all these new applications are going to come out, all these new ways using the same tools we've already used. So, so there's no need to reinvest in new technology except the NDI, which, of course, is free. I mean, it's free when you buy vMix. It's free when you download it from, from new tech. Uh, and you guys at PTZ Optics have done a great job of bringing the message about NDI to the general public ahead of a lot of folks. I mean, I think there may be more videos out there from you guys on NDI than there are from NewTek. 
Well, thank you. I, I don't know if that's, that's true or not, but I will say that New Tech is 100% behind us. I was at a meeting, with, I met with Andrew Cross on Sunday, and I have a picture, I want to show it to you after the show, of uh, Andrew Cross standing up in front of 600 New Tech dealers with a big PTZ Optics logo behind him. Because at this point, yeah, did you see that? Um, it's, a great, it's great. New Tech has been standing behind us. They're recommending our cameras. The main reason is because uh, you know people want to do things on a budget, right? And the TriCaster Mini is about $5,000. And if you buy four Sonys for $4,000 each, you are at $16,000. If you buy four PTZ Optics, you are at $6,000. Now that TriCaster Mini is free. And that's what, anytime a budget comes into concern, they, they're, they're recommending us left and right. And they're the biggest, they have the most dealers in the country. I mean, in the world, potentially. New Tech is a giant. They've given us the NDI. So we touched on PTZ control. I want to kind of bring it back to that. So we touched on PTC Control and VMAX. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I know you've been to their booth. They've got a few of our cameras. We're showing it off. What have you seen? What, what do we, can we expect from this VMAX con camera control? It, it's amazing. It's amazing. It should have been in there all along. I mean, it, sh it should have been a standard feature four or five years ago. But I'm, there are about 15 things I want to tell you, and they're all rushing to my mouth at the same time. The PTZ Optics camera control allows you to pan, tilt, and zoom the camera from within vMix by setting up a series of vMix inputs, each one with a separate camera preset, so that when you select that input, the camera moves to that preset. And you can select the input in the preview so that it makes whatever motion it's going to be, and then you move that preview preview to program or output so that you have the finished product. So for a house of worship, for example, one PTZ cam and a fixed cam can have the same effect as six cameras. With the fixed cam kind of being your wide shot, that's your steady shot, your go-to shot, and then the other five presets are for a shot of the pastor, a shot of the choir, a shot of whatever else is going to be going on in there. And with some careful interaction between that wide shot and the five presets, it will appear as if you've got six different cameras. And your camera is one of the very few that will do this. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And I was playing with it the other day on my show, and I was just stunned. I was stunned. Now, first of all, I thought that I was going to have to get an RS-232 cable and plug it. Well, I thought I was going to have to plug that, so I was searching B&H Photo. Am I allowed to say B&H Photo on the show? Okay. Well, I was searching for the, the right hardware, and then something inside me said, well, just try it. Because I had my camera hooked up to my network via Ethernet. And, in fact, that's how I was doing video, too. So I was doing video, and then all of a sudden, I could control it through Ethernet. So I've got power to the camera, Ethernet to the camera, I've got video from the camera, and I can control the camera. It is stunning. It's stunning. And with vMix's low latency feature, the camera has, I don't know, maybe a two frames latency. Not even enough to really know, frankly. And I've seen a lot of cameras where the lip sync was just way off. Um, but between your camera and, and vMix, it's, it's dialed in. So this is a tremendous solution for anybody that does... A, um, uh, a city council meeting where you've got five different council people and instead of having one camera for each of the five different people, you have two cameras, one camera that shows everybody and then your camera that has five presets on it and you just hit the preset and it moves from person to person to person. I mean, this is, this is groundbreaking. And you guys were working really closely. In fact, you shipped a PTZ Optics camera from Pennsylvania to Australia, two of them, to help this be done, and two for their booth. Oh my goodness! This is, you know, obviously, they, I mean, the partnerships like this, you can't even put a price on it. You can't put a price on a partnership like that. Um, so shipping cameras to Australia is beans, is it's peanuts compared to what they can, what they're doing with our software and what you're talking about today. It, it wouldn't have happened if we didn't ship them a camera. Um, and I'm so more than happy to, to do that for someone like Martin, who in two weeks has it done. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, he's amazing. We're referring to Martin Sinclair, who is the, the CEO 
of vMix and also a long lost cousin of mine. Uh, there are only so many Sinclairs in the world and they all have to be related uh, sooner or later. His came to, uh, to Australia through New Zealand and mine came to the US through Canada and then the Bahamas. So it just, you know, we all started in, in uh, Scotland though. So it's the same place. But Martin has done an amazing job with vMix. It is, frankly, it is underpriced. It is over-featured, it's too easy to use, and it's too well-supported. It's just, it's broken all the rules, and of course, as a result, it's, a, it's an incredible success. Yeah, no, it really is. I'm, I'm trying to, there was a couple more things I wanted to talk, to, talk about. So we, we covered the, um, the camera control, we talked a little bit about your show, we talked a little bit about House of Worship and that market. Uh, we talked about the video conferencing, the talk show. We've covered it a lot here, and there was something that came to mind. I, I, I've lost it now. Um, IP control. Oh, that's what it was. So one of the things I wanted to mention about the integration with PTZ Optics and, and vMix is the fact that basically the way it works is that you have a bunch of different um, presets that, that are camera presets that are inputs, and basically as soon as it goes into the preview, the camera will move to that space. So you really do need two cameras to make that work, right? I think you do because what you see is you see a camera that's moving on one axis and then another axis and then maybe focuses or zooms after that. And, and it may be at some point that your design is such that it will do it all in one smooth mo movement and then you know only one camera is required. And uh, I've been getting questions about that. It's, what, it, what is it? It's called tracing. It's called actual called tracing so you can trace lines and different things and our Rokosoft camera control software can do that. Um, but I, I think what we were kind of getting at is that if you have two cameras, you let it move while it's in preview and then you switch. Right, 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 right. And, and that second camera for folks that are on the budget, the second camera doesn't have to be much more than a Logitech C920 1080p webcam that's showing a wide shot um, and if you're, let's say you're broadcasting at 720, you can even crop that down to a tighter picture if it's too far away for you. And they also make uh, USB extenders, so you can take that Logitech C920 and put it 60 feet away from your PTZ. Uh, there's a pastor of a church in the U.S. that has developed a, uh, a PTZ um, mount for his Logitech C920 that he built from scratch himself. Yeah, that was amazing. Incredible. So yeah, I think that is important to note that uh, you know for to, for two cameras, it doesn't have to be both PTZ, but it's nice to, when you are panning and tilting. The professional way is to have you know not to show the panning and tilting is to, to to switch to that webcam feed and then go once the camera is exactly where you need it, transfer over. So I think that's kind of the takeaway that a lot of people I don't think can understand that right off the bat. I think one PTZ camera I can get twelve views that's true but you may want something to switch between as you're doing your panning and tilting so Tom how can people find you they can find me at easternshorebroadcasting.com and they can uh, go there that's where our Wednesday live show is broadcast from there there's a contact page there there's a store there where we sell uh, the PTZ optics cameras at deep discounts no I'm just teasing we're not allowed to say that um, but um, and and what we specialize in is working with folks that want to solve problems. They have a house of worship, or they have a talk show, or they have sporting events, or they have other events that they want to, that they're doing on a regular basis, and they want to have a solution for that. And so we help design solution. If we need to build a PC for them to do that, to have the proper number of inputs, we'll do that. In fact, we built a PC for you guys yeah, this year. Show off. Tom built us the. One of the things that we wanted is we have so many cameras. We want actually wanted to have a computer that could take 12 USB 3.0 inputs and control them all, which I believe we're going to be doing with vMix. The, part of the dream here is to have the ability for our customers at any time of day to go in and choose the camera they want to see and control it remotely, remotely from anywhere in the world. That's, that's the dream. You've built the machine to do it, plus I can use it for live streaming and anything else I want. But um, that is kind of the goal, and it's taken us a long time. We've got more priorities than that. That's kind of like a, when everything else is done, we want to figure that out. <laughs> That's the goal, but you gave us what we need to do it. And that was kind of the first step. So thank you for that. My pleasure. My pleasure. So 
thank you everyone for watching. We're going to stay live. I'm going to let Tom, uh, you know, finish up. But uh, it's been a great time. Thank you for coming by and stopping by. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tom.